Today, I'm having my students read three full chapters from Job, and that's because we are taking these chapters as, um, well, we're taking the full arguments from his comforters, and we're taking Job's full responses to each, and they're in cycles. So Job is answering uh, whoever talked to him last, Zophar, I think. And here, you've got to understand he's being sarcastic at the beginning of chapter 12. It takes him three chapters to answer them this time around. And Job answered and said, no doubt, but ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have understanding as well as you. I'm not inferior to you. Yea, who knoweth not such things as these? He's saying, why are you lecturing me? You don't think I know the stuff you're telling me? My eyes have seen all this. My ears have heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. But I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. You, however, smear me with lies. You are worthless physicians, all of you. If only you would be altogether silent for you, that would be wisdom. You have to imagine yourself and imagine what he's feeling. An innocent man suffering, and all they're doing is picking on him and telling him how unholy he is and how he deserves it. Now that I have prepared my case, I know I will be vindicated. Can anyone bring charges against me? If so, I will be silent and die. Let me speak, he says to God, and you reply to me. How many wrongs and sins have I committed? Show me my offenses and my sin. Why do you hide your face and consider me your enemy? Why do you torment a wind-blown leaf? Why do you chase after dry chaff? And then he makes the point that we also get in Ecclesiastes. Oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man shall die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. He's demanding justice from God. But blessed is he who hungers and thirsts for righteousness, for he will be satisfied. Job is demanding an audience not with these sanctimonious, superficially religious, miserable comforters of his who are simply saying, if you're suffering, you must have deserved it. This at a time and place when the Jews don't fully understand eternal life, which is what Job's complaining about at the end. You're making me miserable, God. I don't know why. And soon I'll be dead. And I kind of wish I were dead. But I wish you would answer me. Job in his suffering is seeing beyond the mere fake religious puffy attitude of his miserable tormentors. Now let's take a look at Romans. See, sometimes St. Paul is confusing. He talks so much about the law and the relationship between faith and works and uh, what was the law, what is its relationship to us, and we really didn't go deep into that because Romans is difficult. But this is easy. Owe oh, no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. I really think many of my students are under the impression that the Ten Commandments are arbitrary and God just gave them to us and he could change them at any time if he wanted to. Or hopefully they, they don't think that, for instance, the Pope or the bishops could change a commandment because these are not, A, they're not man-made things, and B, they're not really God-made in the sense that they're not just fashioned. Love is at the heart of our existence. And that's why love fulfills the law, but not love the way it's often preached. Just be nice, just be tolerant, just put up with everything. Because love is about 
truth and beauty and goodness and reality. And if you're blind to reality or if you want to live in some sort of bubble world, then you won't be able to love. And you will see someone suffering like Job and you will say, well, it must be your fault because you won't understand suffering. Because only through love do we really understand the meaning of suffering and the meaning of life. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, as Jesus tells us. Which reminds me, if you don't really care about reading the Bible, then your treasure is elsewhere. And I suppose that's okay. So those of you who are not reading the readings, you should feel guilty. For one thing, you're in this class that I'm teaching and I'm taking the time to put up these videos. I'm trying to get you to read the Bible every day and to read different sections of it every day. So you get a sense of the whole book and how every part of it fits together. And if it's not your treasure, well, your heart won't be with it. That's what Jesus tells us in today's gospel reading. Don't store up your treasures where the moth can eat them and rust can corrode them. Don't put your faith in the corruptible things of the world. Put your faith in the things that do not corrupt, the everlasting things. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Treasure these words. If these words speak to you and they draw you, maybe it's a little bit from the story of Abraham, or maybe it's something St. Paul says. Maybe it's a phrase in a psalm, and it somehow touches you, and you want to know more. That's how learning works. Education is not just forcing upon you a series of prejudices about books you've never read. And that's not the faith either. The faith is an encounter, a trusting and loving encounter with something true, someone, true and real and good, who is alive and is challenging us to be fully alive. And one way to get there is to read these words and let them speak to you. Treasure them and your heart will be with them. Your heart will become circumcised and you will change. And you will become, we hope, much as we hate to become this, more loving of all things.